In my last lecture, you were introduced to Coulomb's law, which is a description of the electric force that occurs between charges. Like the law of universal gravitation, Coulomb's law obeys an inverse square law. As you saw in the previous lecture, we described the magnitude of the force that one charge exerts upon the other in the following way. So let's say that I have two charges, Q1 and Q2, the metric SI unit of charge is the Coulomb. The two charges are separated by a distance r. And then the magnitude of the force that one charge exerts upon the other, described by Coulomb's law, is as follows. This expression here, where the constant K, like capital G in the law of universal gravitation, is a fundamental constant. K, however, is a very large number compared to capital G. The value of K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Okay, now, the electric force occurs two different ways. There is a force of attraction and a force of repulsion. A force of attraction occurs between opposite charges. A force of repulsion occurs between like charges, unlike the force of gravity, for example, which is just attractive in nature. So because the electric force occurs two different ways, a force of attraction and a force of repulsion, it is then therefore necessary to go through a formal vector notation that we then use to describe the force that one charge exerts upon the other. It's not necessary to go through this vector notation when talking about the law of universal gravitation, because as I said, gravity only occurs one way as an attractive force, but to take care of the two types of different electric forces, we then therefore introduce this formal vector notation. So let me take you through that notation. Okay, so, the formal vector notation is described in the following way. Okay, so let's say that I have two-dimensional space and I have two charges, a Q and a Q prime. And then relative to the origin, these two charges each have position vectors. So for example, there's a position vector here for Q. This is referred to as small r. There's a position vector here for Q prime. This is referred to as r prime. And then we also complete a tail-to-tip method of vector addition, vector triangle on this diagram, by describing this vector right here. This vector right here, which by definition goes from Q prime to Q, is referred to as capital R. Okay, now the vector addition on this diagram very simply is as follows. R prime plus capital R is equal to little r, like so. Okay, now the vector that we want, however, is capital R because capital R, the magnitude of it, for example, is describing the distance between the two charges. So let's go ahead and move the little r prime to the other side. Like so. Okay, now in vector form, the force exerted on Q due to Q prime is as follows. So the force on Q due to Q prime. The magnitude of that force, first of all, is K Q Q prime divided by the distance squared. But we are talking about the vector. So then therefore, what is the unit vector that goes here to complete this description? Well, that unit vector, by definition, points like so on my diagram and is referred to as capital R hat. So because we're talking about the force on this charge due to this one, ultimately the direction of that force vector is in terms of this unit vector here, capital R hat. So I'm going to go ahead and attach then a capital R hat to this side of the expression for that reason. Now how do we write this capital R hat in terms of our familiar I hat and J hat? Well, what we do is we take this expression and we just multiply it by one. Specifically, we multiply it by capital R over capital R. Let's rewrite the expression now in the following way. Okay, so the vector force on Q due to Q prime is as follows. K Q Q prime, capital R, R hat, divided by capital R cubed. This quantity right here in parentheses is the vector capital R. 
like so, and we then end up with this expression here. This expression here is thought of as a recipe. The recipe essentially is as follows. Find the two position vectors, little r prime and a little r, and then from that, find capital R and its magnitude. You then plug everything into the expression. When you follow this vector notation as a recipe, it takes care of all of the ambiguities associated with positive signs or negative signs. It takes care of all of the ambiguities when doing two-dimensional problems, say, and resolving vectors into components with cosines and sines of angles. All of that is taken care of if you just simply follow this as a recipe. And that's what I'm gonna do here for the example that we'll take a look at in this video. So go ahead and copy the example down into your notes as I begin to describe it here. Okay, before I do, however, let me go ahead and do some erasing. Okay, and then in the little box up here on the upper board, let's go ahead and write down this recipe. So the force on Q due to Q prime is this expression here, where capital R vector is little r minus little r prime. Okay, so here's the problem that we have. There's a diagram that goes with it. We have four charges that are fixed in space and they form a square of side A. One of the charges is at the origin. And then what we're gonna do is calculate the net force exerted on that charge due to the other three. And then we're given the following diagram. Okay, so first of all, we have the charge at the origin, which is a positive Q. Then there's a positive Q over here. There's a negative Q over here. And there's a negative Q over here. All four charges form a square of side A. That is like so, here and here. Okay, now we're gonna be finding the net force exerted on this charge due to the other three. So let me go ahead and name the other three charges. Let's call them one, two, and three, like so. And then using this as a recipe, what we're gonna find is the force on Q due to number one, then the force on Q due to number two, and then lastly, the force on Q due to number three, and then we'll add it all together. So let's take a look at the force exerted upon this charge here due to this one. So I'm gonna write this then as the force on Q due to number one. And then what we have to do is basically build, if you will, this expression by following it as a recipe. The first thing that you do is you find the position vectors little r, and little r prime. First of all, little r. That position vector, by definition, goes from the origin to the charge that experiences the force. We're talking about the force exerted upon this charge. This charge here is at the origin. Therefore, its position vector, little r, is equal to zero. Okay, and then we have little r prime. By definition, little r prime always goes from the origin to the charge that causes the force. Number one is causing the force exerted on this charge, so then therefore its position vector like so, little r prime, is a j hat. Okay, now we find capital R, which is r minus r prime, so that's equal to negative a j hat. The magnitude of that, of course, is just a. Okay, and now we just fill everything into the expression. So what I do, let me rewrite it down here. The force on Q due to number one is K times Q times Q, so KQ squared, times capital R vector, negative A J hat, divided by the magnitude of capital R cubed, A cubed. Okay, do a little bit of cancellation. Of course, one of the A's cancels out, and we then arrive at this. Like so. Okay, does this make sense? Well, if we're talking about the force exerted upon this charge here due to this charge, 
First of all, it's going to be a force of repulsion because, because rather, these are both positive charges. So then, therefore, the force exerted on this charge due to this one is going to be in the negative j hat direction. And it is. The magnitude of it is going to be k times q times q divided by the distance squared. And it is. Okay, let's actually skip number two for now, and let's jump to number three. So now let's find the force on Q due to number three. Once again, we have to identify the position vectors. So first of all, little r. Once again, little r goes from the origin to the charge that experiences the force. Okay, that's the charge at the origin. So once again, little r is equal to zero. Okay, and then our prime. Our prime goes from the origin to the charge that causes the force. So that's going to be a i hat, like so. Okay, and then from there, find capital R. Capital R is R minus R prime. So zero minus a j or a i hat, excuse me, like so. The magnitude of that, of course, is just a. And now we plug everything in. So the force on Q due to number three is going to be K times Q times negative Q, like so, times capital R vector, this guy right here, divided by the magnitude of that vector cubed, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel out the negative signs, cancel out an A and then rewrite the expression. Like so. Okay, does this make sense? Well, this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge, so then therefore there's gonna be a force of attraction exerted upon this Q in this direction. That's the positive I hat direction, like so. And then the magnitude of that force is gonna be K times Q times Q divided by the distance squared, and it is. So all of that is taken care of by using this formal vector notation. Okay, now lastly, let's find the force on Q due to number two. Now, if we were gonna do this roughly by using cosines and sines, we would have to find an angle right here on the diagram. We would then have to find a force vector and break it up into components, et cetera, et cetera. We could do all of that, of course. It's not difficult to do under these circumstances, but watch how the vector notation takes care of all of the ambiguities, positive signs and negative signs and so on, if you just follow the vector notation as a recipe. So once again, we need our vectors. First of all, little r. Little r is once again zero. Once again, little r always goes from the origin to the charge that experiences the force. That's that guy at the origin. Okay, then we have little r prime. Little r prime is always the vector that goes from the origin to the charge that causes the force. That's this guy up here, so it's going to be an a i hat plus a j hat. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and find capital R, which is r minus r prime. So that's negative a i hat minus a j hat. And then if you use some Pythagorean theorem there, we can then go ahead and find the magnitude of capital R. When we do the magnitude of capital R is root two times A. Okay, now we just plug everything in. So we're gonna have the force on Q due to number two. So K times Q times negative Q multiplied by capital R vector, this guy right here, So, divided by the magnitude of capital R cubed. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify that expression. So let's get rid of this. Let's go ahead and simplify the expression. Okay, first of all, this negative sign here cancels with this one and this one. So let's get rid of that, like so. I can also cancel out an A from the numerator and an A from the denominator like so. And now let's just rewrite the expression. So the force on Q 
do to number two is equal to the following. KQ squared times I hat plus J hat divided by this quantity cubed times A squared. Like so. Okay, let's just take a look at the direction of this force vector. Positive X component, positive Y component. Does that make sense? Well, this is a positive charge, this is a negative charge. So then therefore the force exerted on this charge due to this one is going to be in this direction like so. In the first quadrant that force vector is, that is what a positive X and a positive Y component. Okay, even though I'm not going to go through this formally, notice that because the magnitude of the X component of this vector and the magnitude of the Y component of this vector is the same, what is then therefore the angle associated with this force vector on a diagram above with respect to the positive x direction? It's obviously a 45 degree angle. So once again, everything is taken care of here mathematically by using this vector notation as a simple recipe. And then I'm not gonna write it down at this point, but the remainder of the example would just be the following. In order to find the net force exerted upon this charge due to the other three, we would then just add all of these force vectors up. So add this guy here, to this guy here, to this guy here, and that then gives us our answer. So once you get used to it, using this vector notation as a simple recipe is easy to do, especially in rather complicated situations such as this.